Yes. Intro, I guess. Yes. Welcome to Next Corner. Today, me and Kay Fox are going to continue our conversation with uh, J.R. Tolkien and Lord of the Rings. Kay Fox, you have the floor to let everyone know who you are and uh, give them an idea about what you do. Her link for her channel will be down below, and there will be a link right here above us as well so that you can uh, go visit her channel and give her some love. Go ahead. Hi, uh, I'm Kay Fox. I talk about books. Um, I really like Discworld. Uh, that's kind of my big thing. I talk a lot about fantasy and sci-fi. And yes, there we go. And Discworld is going to be our book club on my channel for next year. So every second month we're going to do two Discworld books. And she is definitely going to be an expert. I don't know how much of an expert you are, so we'll do this one for now. Yep. She's going to be our expert I've, for... I've read it uh, for a long time. I, I don't know how much of an expert I am either. <laughs> but we'll uh, let you definitely help us out along. We also have uh, Nanu, I believe, on our channel, who is also mm -hmm. a big Discworld fan. So mm -hmm. uh, we definitely have some people who are going to be able to guide us through that now. We're going to be talking about someone who I believe definitely uh, influenced Terry Pratchett. Mm -hmm. They are Tolkien. Uh, you can, I've only read The Color of Magic, but you can totally see oh, absolutely. Uh, the Tolkien inside of that. Um, so The Fellowship of the Ring. We did The Hobbit last video. Uh, you all got to see and hear all the wonderful things that Bilbo and company did. Uh, Bilbo also happened to collect the ring, the special ring, the one ring to rule them all. I have a, my wedding ring is the one ring, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. My wife, my wife got it for me. I'm like Tom Bombadil, put it on my finger and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, the, this is where we start off and the first half of the book is basically taking place in the Shire. Mm -hmm. And I find that to be quite impressive that like a lot of people, and, and I will say this, a lot of people when they try to read J.R. Tolkien give up within the first half of the Fellowship of the Ring because it is so slow going. Mm -hmm. We get the unexpected party. What did you think of the unexpected party with the Sackville Baggins and the entire crowd of hobbits that show up for Bilbo's? Hundred and eleventh birthday. It's Frodo's thirty third, right? Yeah, it's Frodo's thirty third. Yep. Yeah. And I actually really enjoyed that. I enjoyed all of the time uh, spent in the Shire. But yeah, I enjoyed the the birthday party. And um, and I don't want to talk about the movies too much. But can I just say how well the movie did to like with the party and everything? Like because. I, I so very good. much grew up with the movies, and so reading through that, I just very much was visualizing every the dragon scene. dragon in the book was <laughs> exactly. way more intense than he was in the book in the movie, eh? Uh, but yes. The, but... the movie version, Peter Jackson, you could tell he he loved the mm -hmm. book so much. Mm -hmm. He he brought what was thought to be an impossible book to uh, mm -hmm. adapt. Mm-hmm to life in the early 2000s and knocked mm -hmm. it out of the park. I mean, yeah. today you can watch those films and they still hold up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The CGI is a little bit off, mm -hmm. but it holds up phenomenally. But he, he used such a good combination of, um, of miniatures with CGI that there's and not painting. even that much. Yeah, exactly. There's not yeah. even that much that... Yeah, yeah. It, it, it wasn't all CGI, so... No, and even, I believe they built Hobbiton for it. Mm -hmm. um, so someone gave them land to build Hobbiton. So yeah, 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 yeah. I believe Hobbit it's still and there, and you can still visit uh, it in it New is. Zealand. Yeah. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's so amazing what he did to bring it to life. But mm -hmm. the books, they are Tolkien, just he truly did uh, bring this story to life inside all of our heads yeah um how did you feel that mary and pippin aren't even there at the beginning because they aren't even born yet yeah that that was bizarre oh. to me like i'm sitting here thinking like 
where are they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the, because I, they, um, in the movies, they're, they're two of my favorite characters. And in, it turned out that in the books, they became two of my favorite characters as well. And so I was, yeah. I was waiting for them. And so, yeah, the fact that they weren't even around at first, I was like, oh, okay. If Frodo's 33 there, he doesn't actually leave the Shire until he's 50 years old. Mm -hmm. So 25, 28 years mm -hmm. go by. And I believe Pippin is only in his early tweens, so early 20s. Mm -hmm. So he's like not even born, not even thought of yet, right? Yeah. Um, and then what did you think of Bilbo's leaving of the Shire with Gandalf inside uh, Bag End? Just before he like goes upon his adventure and sings his wonderful song. I thought it was very good. Well, first off, it was a very good show of history between both Bilbo and Gandalf um, without like having to be like, let's go summarize the entirety of The Hobbit in a big like dialogue. Right. Um, <laughs> like he did a good job of showing that they had a past together without exposition dumping. Um, I find that Tolkien actually does a lot of exposition dumping. Mm -hmm. But in the middle of his exposition dumping, he also mm -hmm. likes to show us what he's dumping. Yeah. <laughs> the very weird author for, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm always about show me, don't tell me. But he is a weird author where he's like, I'm going to tell you, but I'm going to interrupt you for a second while I'm telling you and I'm going to show you mm -hmm. what I'm telling you. <laughs> and it's like, this yes. is so weird. You, you're, you're, taking the things I love and turning them on their head and yes. doing it weird. But he, he is so interesting in his uh, explanation of the Shire. Like, how can that not make you want to go mm -hmm. live there? Yes, it just right? feels so cozy. And it feels it's, like home in a, a free society. Yeah. Like, they work, but mm -hmm. they work in trade. They, they're like, okay. I've got some pork here. Can I trade you for some long bottom leaves? Yeah, like, yeah. That is phenomenal. Like, yeah, they, they almost like a Walden Pond type um, yeah. society. Yeah. They they don't they don't care about you know having to own things. What they care about is like mm -hmm. having food, having friends, being married. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. living life, drinking yeah. ale, smoking Surviving. pipe. That's their that's their life. That's what they mm -hmm. enjoy. Uh, yeah. it's, 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 we're going to get there with Bree, but there is a very stark contrast between the Hobbit, the Hobbits of the Shire and the Hobbits of Bree. Because mm -hmm. the Hobbits of Bree are working folk. They go and do jobs alongside mm -hmm. the men. Where yeah. in the Shire, they just, they, they're collective. You mm -hmm. know? They live together and I, I really uh, enjoy that. Um, so we're going to fast forward a little bit here. What did you think about um, Frodo selling Bag End to the Sackville Bag End? It, it was a very interesting situation because it was almost like, I, I feel like he gave Belladonna was, everything she it wanted. It was a good way to bring suspicion upon himself. <laughs> In a way, yeah. like, like a Why are you doing anybody, this? yeah, anybody who knew him and knew his family and knew his family's history would be like, um, are you okay, Frodo? <laughs> yeah. So um, I feel like it wasn't exactly the wisest um, move. No. And also, we. I always do this because we're in the Shire and I always talk about scouring in the Shire, but <laughs> that, that put mm -hmm. the scouring in, um, mm -hmm. in motion, putting yeah. the Sackville Bagginses in power. Mm -hmm. um, so Frodo goes and lives outside of Buckland with Mary and all of them yeah. in his new tiny little house. And this is something that I think the films kind of missed out on that, mm -hmm. the, that happens in the Shire quite often is not every hobbit lives in a hobbit hole mm -hmm. there's a lot of hobbits who lives in houses mm -hmm. and they don't seem to have that many in the shire and when you get to buckland that's exactly what frodo moves into is a house 
Mm -hmm. right and that that was something interesting and then of course we're over uh what is his what what is the guy who starts with b he's the fifth hobbit in the group I, who ends uh, up staying behind i can't remember because they're the he's the one that they're he stays behind to take care of uh yes Frodo's house. dang it i did not mark this last time boggins baggins bo- 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 i don't know um uh wasn't it Fredegar? Oh, maybe. Uh, what's his last name? I don't know. Anyway. It just has it in the dialogue. <laughs> if you know his name and we're stumped, put it down below in the comments. Yes. Um, <laughs> I will he, find it at some point. <laughs> I consider him a part of the core hobbits mm-hmm. because Mm-hmm. He didn't leave, but upon their return, he was extremely helpful to them. Mm-hmm. And uh, definitely kept Frodo's possessions all nice and safe. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing I loved about it is they, all five of them, went to Farmer Maggot's house before mm-hmm. leaving, where in the movie, they're in Far- Farmer Maggot's croft being chased yeah. out by and I love the fact that Farmer Megan is a much more happier loving character yes. in the book than he is and like in the movie it's like hey get out of here you young whippersnappers yeah and, and the book's like come on in and have a meal guys yeah yeah <laughs> and it's and I guess it's almost like in the in the book, Frodo's like afraid of Farmer Maggot because of a past experience, and yeah, he took mushrooms so, from the field. Yeah, or something like that. and yeah. so I guess the movie just decided to embrace that aspect instead of taking what's actually in the book. Well, I mean, <laughs> I if you were to do what's in the book, you'd have to move Frodo out of the Shire, and you know, there, there's and, a lot of and add a whole lot to it. Yeah, there's a lot of story to cover, and mm-hmm. then. I'm not sure if Peter Jackson initially decided he wasn't going to do scouring Mm -hmm. or not. And I think that that might have been another Mm -hmm. thing that he was apprehensive about is whether he was going to put that in or not. Because if he was going to do scouring, it would totally make sense to do that storyline. But if Mm -hmm. you're not going to do scouring, you don't really need that whole That Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Um, So the Hobbits finally leave Hobbiton. Mm-hmm. And it's the furthest Sam has ever gone. Mm-hmm. Did you see that video that someone did? Yes. Every time Sam takes a step, he says it's the furthest. Yeah, step. it's the furthest he's gone. <laughs> anyway, so uh, they go into mm-hmm. the old woods where not many people come back from, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you think about the old forest? Um... The old forest itself, let's see. Well, it was, I thought it was very, I guess, realistic for, I feel like a lot of people romanticize the idea of going out into the woods and just wandering around and just going off the trail and being able to find your own path like no that's not how it's gonna be you're gonna get stuck in brambles you're gonna get lost that like you're 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 not gonna know where you're going it's not a good idea do not um hikers in the u.s um in the hiking community we call it bushwhacking do not go yeah. bushwhacking <laughs> uh, I, it's also I really love- bad for erosion <laughs> i love bushwhacking i have gone bushwhacking so many times in my life uh last time i stayed it, i used mm-hmm. to dress up as these guys and like yeah we go run around the woods behind my mm-hmm. house and like i yes. would go off the beaten trail i would you mm-hmm. know if there was an old man willow out there he would have got mm-hmm. me yeah <laughs> so oh. we're in the old forest mm-hmm. and we meet one of our favorite characters Tom Bombadil. Yes. I love Tom and Goldberry. I think they're fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I actually have a theory myself that Tom Bombadil is um, the embodiment of God. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in Middle Earth. Mm-hmm. That's why the ring has no effect I, yeah. on him. I've That's heard that why one. He also is all about taking care of nature. Mm-hmm. But also, 
at this point in time, because since the Cimmerillion happened, the gods mm. have not gotten involved mm-hmm. in Middle Earth. They've wanted Middle yeah. Earth to take care of itself. Yeah. And I guess it was actually just after that that they even put the Astari, the wizards, five mm-hmm. wizards, uh, in the Middle Earth to kind of yeah. lead the free peoples where to go not do stuff for them but lead them right yeah and uh because the gods didn't want to have anything to do with it anymore yeah yeah after and they essentially abandoned them so, so it was kind of like well okay they fine. say tom bombadale is potentially the oldest being in middle earth mm-hmm. um and with his magical ways and everything uh and also seeing how like gandalf and saruman and radagast and the two blue wizards are mm-hmm. basically gods with the embodiment of old men. Mm-hmm. Um, I see Tom Bombadil as the embodiment of, is it Eru? Yeah, yeah, Eru. Of the god Eru. So um, I, I believe that he is the embodiment of that because mm-hmm. also uh, Goldberry is the one and only example of a water sprite. Mm-hmm. Yep. works. So she's a water fairy, and that's not to say that she's not an embodiment of a god herself. Yeah. Or a goddess, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and the two of them are madly in love with each other. Like, mm-hmm. I, I love how much in yes. love they are. Yes. And very, so, very. how did you feel about the Hobbit's interaction with Tom Bombadil and Goldberry? Um, well, I love Tom Bombadil. Tom Bombadil falls into a trope that I really love, um, which is the same as, you know, Radagast the Brown or anything like that, which is a very powerful being who still has joy. Um, yeah, and, just like yeah. the childish aspect mm-hmm. to them, right? Yeah, uh, yes. And I really enjoy that. And I think it's actually a nod um, mm-hmm. to J.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, where, mm-hmm. you know, The Hobbit was very childish in a sense compared yeah. to Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Tom Bombadil's a nod towards that, like, okay, mm-hmm. you grew up a bit, now it's time mm-hmm. for you to read The Lord of the Rings, but mm-hmm. here's another, you know, childish character mm-hmm. to kind of bring you back into that feel of uh, suspending belief, you know? Yeah. And, and I thought he was a great character added in myself. Oh, yeah. And I do think that a lot of times, especially in modern fantasy with a lot of, um, I guess, gritty, realistic worlds that we have, we tend to forget the world that we live in still has a lot of bright spots. And there is still a lot of joy, realistically. And there are still joyful people, realistically. (laughs) And so characters like Tom Bombadil are still, you know... If you're oblivious to the world, why wouldn't you be happy? Or or if you are in complete control, why wouldn't you yeah. be happy? <laughs> exactly. And that's the other thing, because when uh-huh. the hobbits go to the Barrow Downs, mm-hmm. and they got the sword laid against their necks, and they're mm-hmm. down there, um, and Frodo starts singing the old Tom Bombadil, Tom Bombadil, mm-hmm. singing the song, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden Tom Bombadil comes showing up, all mm-hmm. happy as could be. You know? Yeah, it just comes along. Helps it's the like hobbits a... out. Yeah, helps the hobbits out and mm-hmm. then gives them swords. Yeah. That are meant to fight Barrow down, mm-hmm. like the Barrow Whites. Mm-hmm. And that, to me, is one of the most important parts of the story because that Barrow down sword that Mary has mm-hmm. is the reason why the Witch King gets killed. Yep. If it wasn't for him doing that, the Witch mm-hmm. King would have never been killed. Yep. And, you know, that, so when they switched it up in the movies to Aragorn giving them swords, I was like, oh, mm. no. I kind of wish that he gave them the swords to be like, these are special magical swords. From the yeah, Fire yeah, Band these are special yeah. from my and ancestors he, and kind of hints that right. they were from... Our, Gondor still kind of or yeah yeah Some, something like that right it yeah. would have been it would have been cool to give that so, those swords the uh, ability however I don't know if in the movie they even bothered giving Merry and Pippin their borrow down swords back 
when they yeah, I don't, uh, I don't did the recall. films. I think they just gave them new swords from wherever they were. Mm-hmm. But in the books, we're way ahead of ourselves right now, but in the book, yes. uh, Aragorn picks up their daggers and swords and saves mm-hmm. them for them and carries yeah. them. Um, okay, so we've touched on Aragorn. The hobbits are leaving mm-hmm. uh, the old forest now. What mm-hmm. did you think of Aragorn, like, sitting in the trees watching the hobbits and stuff? That was something <laughs> I really loved because... Aragorn, you're such a creep. Seen, right? <laughs> like, he's... Is it... Did I just, like, make that up in my mind or something when I was reading? But I, I could have I he was, like, watching the hobbits from, like, the trees or something. When, I as think, they were leaving the burrow down. I think I it's implied that he follows them. I re- definitely remember him following them, like, into Bree. Um, yeah. And it's saying something about that. I definitely remember that. A dark figure sort mm-hmm. of stalking. Like, right? like because, come, follows them over the wall or something like that. Yeah, yeah I definitely remember yeah. that. He's, um, he's just so creepy in it. I love it. It's fantastic. I know. Honestly, everything about Aragorn just cracks me up. Like, I oh, know a lot of people see him as this, like, super stoic, like, not funny at all character, but... He, no, he's he my... He cracks me up. He's <laughs> my favorite character in all the Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we get to Bree. The hobbits uh, go in with the name Mr. Underhill. Mm-hmm. And the uh, pub owner understands fully compared to the movie where he's like, ah, mm-hmm. Gandalf, yep. Gandalf. <laughs> oh, yes, old men, pointy hat. And it's like, uh, no, in yeah. the books, you're terrified of Gandalf. Like, this yes. is not a, you know, you're like, Gandalf, oh, yes. Uh, come with me, Master Hobbits, this way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? and yeah. I, I enjoy the implication there that Gandalf almost has like this entire like spy network almost of just like these yeah. like common well, people that just know it, him and like do his bidding and it's it just goes people, to show network. It goes to show the wandering wizard theme mm-hmm. to his character mm-hmm. that you know he has met and dealt with a lot of people. Yes. And has influence on a lot of people Mm -hmm. right um because uh i believe aragorn was hired by gandalf first to hunt down um gollum gollum yeah and he took gollum to mirkwood to be held by the the elves elves there Mm -hmm. but then he returned to the shire because him and the other dunedain are actually watching over the shire and protecting it at this Mm -hmm. point in time at the request of gandalf Mm -hmm. So when we get to Bree and we find out Gandalf's not there, Gandalf leaves a letter for Frodo Mm -hmm. and the Hobbits saying you Mm -hmm. can trust Aragorn. He doesn't say anything about Strider. (laughs) Yes. And so uh, we get Mr. Uh, Butterbury or something like that. Butterberg, Butter... Butterberg or whatever his name is. Butterberg. Yeah, I think it's something like that. We get him... Uh, being very hospitable towards mm-hmm. the hobbits and mm-hmm. very not hospitable towards Aragorn. <laughs> he's, yeah, he, he, he's almost, yeah, he's very prejudiced against the rangers, uh, yeah, the rangers in general. Like, he's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they come here for beer all the time and don't pay. Something yeah. Like that. Right? Yeah, they, well, he's like talking about how like just sketchy they are and oh, they're just in the woods all the time. Like, yeah. Okay. But they're hermits. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, what have they done to you? I was actually just reading an article last night that in medieval times, mm-hmm. it was a special thing for you to be a hermit. If mm-hmm. you were a hermit that went and lived in the woods, you were uh, being secluded to be closer to God. Mm-hmm. And so people would actually go on journeys to find hermits. Mm-hmm. Seek their infinite wisdom. Yep. And I find that so interesting. And yep. after I learned that last night, it actually uh, falls in line big time with um, the Rangers. Mm-hmm. People seek the Rangers for their yeah. knowledge a lot of the time in this story mm-hmm. because they've been everywhere. They, you know, they have a lot of knowledge from surviving out in yeah. the wild. Yeah, they're a little bit more 
they're a little bit like I guess nomad nomadic hermits. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. They don't really and, necessarily have their little hermit hut, but they, yeah. And I found that a really interest interesting um, mm-hmm. way Tolkien brought that together because I mm-hmm. it's just so weird the different things that happen in the past that Tolkien had like went yoink I'm gonna grab that and mm-hmm. put it right in here you know mm-hmm. and he does such a phenomenal job with history and turn it mm-hmm. into fantasy yeah. um so the hobbits are now starting to trust Aragorn mm-hmm. after a little bit uh call and Sam keeps calling them long shanks and stuff like that mm-hmm. um what did you think of his plan to stop the ring race I remember seeing this part in the film mm-hmm. and it had just been after I read the book Mm-hmm. And it blew my mind mm-hmm. to watch it unfold. Yes. Because I felt like that was something the movie did. Like, so well. Perfect. So well. And as perfect. I was reading it, like that actually was going through my head because. Right. It, in the book, it's not set up that way at all. It's not like set up like, oh, no. and they entered the room and what's going to happen? It's it's very yeah. much set up like they're safe. It's fine. This is what yeah. happened. Yeah, um, they're, they're over in another building. Yeah, okay. exactly. Like, don't yeah. worry about them. Yeah, but, but the, the way the movie set it up was, yes, excellent. But I mean, like, he, the, the innkeepers even shows his bravery mm-hmm. against the race and stuff mm-hmm. like that right where in the movie he's like hiding down below the mm-hmm. bar like don't get me and mm-hmm. you know it, it's funny the amount people stand up to the ring race in the yeah book. yeah it happens so often and it's just so so strange because in the movie there is such a fear mm-hmm. put behind them that makes them terrifying for the mm-hmm. movie and in the books um it's definitely there but it they the, the people just you know from hobbits to men they just mm-hmm. are like no you can't be here go away <laughs> yeah well it's almost like i feel like in the books it's almost like the ring race have the ability to sort of suppress their evil aura so to speak so that they yeah. come across like so that they can almost blend in a little bit more and so like I feel like a lot of times whenever people are standing up to them it's because they're trying to just be a normal they person just, and get by and just you know cause yeah. as little ruckus as possible yeah. <laughs> and then um, yeah I I really love that part of the ring race and then mm-hmm. uh, we get Bill the Pony Bill the Pony yes has very important pony. character. Bill is amazing. I love Bill the Pony. Yeah. Um, and and I, I thought that he was going to die. I swore he was going to die. He didn't, though. He didn't. He made it till the end. <laughs> yeah. um, he made it further than Boromir. Oh, Boromir. <laughs> um, so uh, we're going to Weathertop. Okay, yes. Weathertop. What did you think of Weathertop? I, I I love the fact that they're going through the woods, they're going through the forest, they're mm-hmm. off the beaten trail, and they show up at Weathertop, and this time, instead of Aragorn disappearing for whatever mm-hmm. reason on Weathertop, he stays with the hobbits the whole time. Yep. And Weathertop, is that where Frodo gets stabbed? That's where Frodo gets stabbed okay. by yes. at the Morgul Blade, yep. Okay, yes. Um... I mean, it was very interesting to, I guess, get that clear image of the Witch King for the first time. Um, And also Sam being Samwise the Brave, like, throws himself in front of the ring race, but he just gets swept Mm. aside because he's so little. But he 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 tries. He does. And he does. He's he's amazing. I love that about him. So it was something that I found to be uh, quite quite taken and then of course mm-hmm. Aragorn gets to show off his badass skills yes. finally yes. for the first time and yes. uh I don't think anyone was disappointed mm-hmm. yes <laughs> both in his fighting and in his healing um yeah. which I think is I I really appreciated Tolkien showing both the hands sides of the king and, is the hands of a healer yes and I guess I really appreciate Tolkien showing that both things are very important. Like it's like a lot of times, especially in fantasy, 
there are these big combat scenes where people just you, you know, got the warrior, you got the cleric, you got the healer, mm -hmm. but Aragorn mm -hmm. is the warrior and mm -hmm. the healer all in one. And, I love that. Yeah. And a lot of times the healers are kind of, I mean, unless you're, unless you are in a like RPG setting, then the healers are often dismissed. In an actual story, healers are, are Very important. not, a, yeah, like, and well, um, just to jump ahead here a mm -hmm. second. Um, even Gandalf gets a vial of special invigorating potion mm -hmm. later on from Elrond too, which mm -hmm. I, I think is fantastic that like, because mm -hmm. Aragorn would have learned his healing properties from Elrond mm -hmm. in Rivendale, right? Yeah. And I think that's really interesting to see uh, the healing properties mm -hmm. that the elves give the story that gives it to Aragorn. Mm -hmm. and. Aragorn being able to heal is actually, I believe, a very uh, important manner to the story. Mm -hmm. uh, beginning, middle, end, end. Absolutely. Forth. Absolutely. Yeah. Because he, I mean, there are several times throughout the story where he does heal very important characters that come through, like Frodo and like other characters later on that we'll mention later yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so... We, we are at the point where we're under Bilbo's trolls, Frodo's mm -hmm. being healed. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about the difference between Glorfindel and Arwen being used for the film? I thought that it was a good move for the film to use Arwen. Um, yeah. Because even... Glorfindel's kind of just there and then yeah. disappears. Well, <laughs> because the first time that I read The Fellowship of the Ring... Glorfindel came out of nowhere he was just this guy and then he was just gone he was completely insignificant to me I didn't care about him it it was nothing until I had read the Silmarillion and I was like holy crap this guy and then I read it and I was like Glorfindel what are you doing here Right? you know and I haven't so, seen you in thousands of years exactly and so it wasn't <laughs> like and uh, this big deal to me until like I had I knew who Glorfindel was and everything and so I think it was a very good move on for the movie to change it to Arwen and also to develop her more because yeah I, there's no female characters in Tolkien's work yeah and also Arwen <laughs> like the whole thing with Arwen and Aragorn it could have been so much better if there had been more on page. There isn't um, any. There isn't yeah. enough. Because yeah. um, Tolkien, for everything he does, he doesn't do love stories. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even think there was a single female character in The Hobbit. Not even one. No, no. There, there were some mentions. Yeah, but there's no one there yeah. that's a female character on page, I, right? I think Bard had a daughter. Yeah, but she didn't <laughs> Yeah, she didn't do anything. But yeah, I think no. Bart had a daughter. Yeah, he yeah. does. Um, it's just one of those things where he like yeah. he doesn't lift up those characters a lot, no. which makes me a little sad. But something that yeah. I did love that Peter Jackson did was uh, mm -hmm. he lifted Arwen and Eowyn up mm -hmm. and made them stronger characters. Mm -hmm. Although I will movie. say that Eowyn, even in the text, is. Yeah, pretty Awen's satisfying. pretty good. Yep. Yeah. Most um, certainly. Um, um, I love the little twist of I am no man. Mm -hmm. Because if you look back in history, have you read the history of the Witch King and the Rohimian? I have not read it, but uh, one of my so, favorite YouTubers does some does some amazing videos on, on Lord of the Rings, and I have watched some of his videos on it. So, so you know that most of Eowyn's ancestors were actually killed by the Witch King. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. And so they have, over the years, tried to kill him over and over and over mm -hmm. again. And it wasn't until she fought him that she was able to. And mm -hmm. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Um, and even then, I don't think she killed him. I think Mary killed him. I th well, the... He the, dealt the final blow. Yeah. But he, he, if it wasn't for Mary stabbing in the leg, mm -hmm. she wouldn't have killed him. Yep, the theory, the theory presented by the, the YouTuber that I 
follow was that he severed the connection to make him killable. So yeah. Mary made him killable and she's the one who killed him. So, Most and, and so it was a situation where still no man killed him because Mary wasn't a man. He was a hobbit. And right. yeah, it's a, it's a double, so, yeah, exactly. double play on words there. Yeah. Which I enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, so after Glorfindale, how did you like Gandalf's, uh, I wish they did it in the movies a little bit more, but like mm -hmm. when the Glorfindale calls down the river, Gandalf adds in his white horses. horses. I like how proud, so cool. uh, like, I like how I proud that. Gandalf is of it. Gandalf is just a really funny character to me. Like He's hilarious. Oh yeah, like everything that he does is really funny to me. I think that he is a very comedic character um, and... I think that uh, Ian McKellen did a good job pulling that off with his Amazing. wittiness. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I cannot picture anyone else really mm -hmm. being Gandalf. So no. uh, if they decide to bring on the Astari in um, mm -hmm. the HBO series, I'm mm -hmm. very interested to see how they're going to pull that off. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Yes. Um, but yeah. So now we're in uh, Elrond's house. Mm -hmm. In Rivendale, one of the mm -hmm. most beautiful places in Middle Earth. Yep. Uh, what did you think of being in the House of the Elves? We haven't been here since The Hobbit, but now we get to see a little mm -hmm. bit more of it. And we also get an another awesome banquet scene. We do get an awesome banquet scene. We get an awesome banquet scene. Um, can, can, I, can I just take a moment to say that elves are huge jerks? All the time, um, yeah. Yep, totally yep, on board yep. with that one. Just, just elves are not good people. Send it out there, elves are. They're, they're the they're the worst people of the good people. <laughs> they're 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 so awful. Um, like um, it, it's no surprise that orcs are as terrible as they are if they were created from elves. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, but I still really enjoyed it, and I wait enjoyed... a second. Does that mean orcs are immortal too? I guess that would be implied. I would think so. Hmm. I never really thought about that. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if someone knows that answer, please put it in the comments below. I would love to know if orcs are immortal. <laughs> and if they are, why aren't they better fighters? Like, that's the thing we know about elves is they're amazing fighters because they are immortal. They have, like, thousands of years of training. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's also implied that a lot of the orcs are kind of newer. At least. Created, yeah. 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 So... So even if they are immortal, it doesn't mean that they've been around forever. It just means they can last forever. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, Council of Elrond, the yes. food banquet, yes. uh, Bilbo writing songs with Aragorn. Yes. Uh, well, first off, I loved this interaction because I love Aragorn's interaction with any of the hobbits and getting to see his familiarity with Bilbo was just so wonderful and so sweet and getting yeah. to see them just sort of joke back and forth and their wittiness and them teasing each other so much i love fun. it so much yeah yeah um one of my favorite things is frodo before he even knows bilbo is there mm -hmm. he's sitting down at the banquet eating and he's talking mm -hmm. to Gloin. yes right and he gets yes. to hear about there and i mean i think mm -hmm. this is even the first time we even get to hear Gloin talk so i don't even know if he talks in the hobbit <laughs> I don't, I don't right? think so. Not without, not without <laughs> Oin talking too at the same time. <laughs> right. So, uh, to me, that's one of the things that I mm -hmm. don't like <laughs> mm -hmm. about uh, the Hobbit. We discussed yes. that before. Was that there wasn't enough uh, mm -hmm. character development for all mm -hmm. the dwarves they put in it. Uh, but we get Gloin and his new son. We get new, new son. No, not new. Mm -hmm. Gimli. Gimli's like already mm -hmm. old at this point in time. So yes. uh, I think Gimli's even older than Aragorn at this point in time too, isn't he? I don't know. I don't recall. 
I don't remember. Anyway, um, yeah, we get to meet Gimli, see Gloin. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think Gloin's reaction would have been when he saw Legolas? <laughs> um, <laughs> not great. <laughs> Our soul. Yep. Yeah, not not great, not great. Probably you imprisoned me. Mm -hmm, probably a little, a little bit of a recoil. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, understandable. I mean, it has been several several years, so who knows? Maybe they have interacted some with the elves of Mirkwood at this point, and um, and maybe they have, you know made amends a little bit at this point i suppose I after the know. battle of the five armies there could mm -hmm. be yeah a better relationship but, yeah uh, I, I i don't but know there's probably like that <laughs> that deep-seated like you yeah <laughs> um so we we get to the council of elrond everyone's sitting around trying to discuss mm -hmm. what to do with the rain mm -hmm. uh what stood out to you the most in the council well, I mean, Gloin being there was part of it, just because. Wait, that was that during? No, that wasn't during the council. That was before. No, the that council. was during the feast. Mm -hmm. when they were reading. Yeah. Um, I really liked being presented Boromir's case and his entire story. Um, his dream. I f yeah because, um, I don't recall in the movies that being. A thing. It's, it's not mentioned in yeah. the movies at all. Yeah. Um, his his uh, prophetic dream is kind of mm -hmm. put to the wayside, but it's very yeah. important to the story because I think uh, mm -hmm. his dream is actually, uh, isn't it Pippin's vision in the movie where he sees the white tree burning? Yeah, it is. It is. That's, that's his dream. So he, mm -hmm. he dreams of Sauron like coming and conquering. Mm -hmm. Gondor, which is a huge thing for him, right? Mm -hmm. And so, as we're moving through the council, we kind of see all these different peoples trying to figure out what to do with this one item. And ultimately, even Bilbo's there. Bilbo decides he's going to offer up his, you know, I'm going to go on the adventure. Everyone's <laughs> like, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, you, you're, Bilbo, you're, you've sit done down. <laughs> <laughs> but Frodo takes it up and mm -hmm. does it and I think that is something that's quite noble and mm -hmm. I'm kind of wondering how much of it was uh influence from the ring for Frodo to keep carrying it that's true that's true like him just wanting to continue to carry it yeah and yeah. I think that that was a big part of it as well mm -hmm. um ultimately I thought it was fantastic just the way it went about and that we mm -hmm. got ourselves nine members mm -hmm. for the fellowship to match up the nine of the Nazgul mm -hmm. um and once again we have all of our amazing characters introduced to us and given yes. like a moment to bicker with each other and stuff before yes. they have to become a team mm -hmm. which is something that I find more and more in uh modern fantasy is mm -hmm. you have characters who start off bickering against each other but eventually mm -hmm. become family friends yeah sort of yeah things, yeah right? um and i find that to be very interesting and i don't know who started that but i don't know if i've ever read anything older than lord of the rings than lord of the rings with that sort that. of fellowship trope. Yeah. yeah yeah i don't i don't know like, I mean, uh, I guess I, there's like King Arthur and his his and Knights of the Round the, yeah, Table. Yeah, exactly. And stuff. But that they sort didn't of really thing. have any. It, yeah, but if I remember they correctly, they would never had any adversities towards each other. They were all like, yeah. I mean, the there was the whole thing. thing with Guinevere. Lan yeah, yeah, Guinevere and Lancelot and stuff. <laughs> uh huh. That's a different story, though. That'd uh -huh. be like that'd be like Arwen trying to like you know, make moves on Boromir or something, right? <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's such a different story. That's, that's not people having, like, differences of opinion because that's of race true. and sort of that's stuff. That's true. That's people having differences of a faithful wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that is something that I would like to look into, though. Like, how, how, how far back does that fellowship trope sort of go? Yeah, that'd it be very, very interesting, interesting to yeah. see. 
mm-hmm. um, maybe even in Beowulf. So I think yeah. it's even an uh, aspect in Beowulf mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's move on to the Fellowship leaving Rivendell. We're going on our adventure. In the movies, we get the most iconic shot in cinema. <laughs> Of the entire fellowship yep. passing by a mountain pass. Yep. Um, yep. And so uh, let's skip over you. No, let's go to where they stop before the crows of Dublin show up. And we get to see the hobbits interacting with mm-hmm. Aragorn, Boromir, and all of them. And like mm-hmm. Aragorn's interaction with the hobbits is always fantastic. It's yes. like. It's like a father getting to see his kids on the weekend. Yes. Interaction yes. sort of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like he, he's missed his kids all week long. He's so happy to get to play with them. Mm-hmm. They come over and he's just, you know, a big bundle of joy. Yeah. And uh, I, I love that about Aragorn. Uh, mm-hmm. He doesn't act that way towards any other race. Yes. He, he, yeah, he jokes with them. He teases them. He... He sometimes he gets a little bit almost like snarky with them, and it's just yeah. like, oh well, it, yeah. He's and, totally out of character yeah, for himself, yeah, with them, right? Yeah, and I love and, it because they yeah. bring it out in him, and that's mm-hmm. that's what I adore. And you know what? Mm-hmm. I uh, I've watched the scene the other today actually of um, Frodo saying, "Would you destroy it?" and mm-hmm. Aragorn closes his hand because I would have gone with you into the fires of Mordor. And Mm -hmm. I feel that aspect is very true when it comes to Aragorn. Mm -hmm. That he would have done everything for the Mm -hmm. Hobbit that he could possibly do. And he still does. I Mm -hmm. mean, just, you know, I think that if it came to going, uh, it would be very interesting. We're going to get there, though, by the Mm -hmm. end of this uh, episode. Mm -hmm. Um, What did you... uh, think of them having to go to the path of Galadris. In the movie we get Saruman putting a spell mm-hmm. on the air kind of making it hard for them to pass but in the book it's just a really bad storm. Like yep. it doesn't say it's done by Saruman or anyone yeah. it's just a really bad it's storm. Just bad. Well yeah. first off okay let me just say that hiking in snow was awful. Um, uh, yeah. It's the, it's it's the worst thing in the world. I think that I have I have hiked unprepared in snow probably like a few times. One time it has been a situation where I had to do it because I was I would have been stranded otherwise. And it was not even like a quarter of an inch of snow. It, it was super windy. I was crying all day. <laughs> it was and I cannot um, imagine it being up to my chest and having to like literally swim through it. Um, so I'm gonna post a picture on Discord later today <sighs> of me up to here in snow. It was the it. worst. It was the worst. It. It, it, it was it it seriously made me never want to go mm-hmm. camping in deep snow again. And it, uh, it, it's yeah. just not a pleasant experience. No. It really isn't. Awful. And and can I also say how annoyed I was at Legolas in this scene while Aragorn and Boromir were like struggling through the snow. He's like, oh. Harry and the hobbits were well, going through the yeah, snow. Yeah, exactly. Like He's like, well, I'm just going to hop Legolas on top like... of the snow <laughs> and I'm just going to, I'm just going to swim on top of it like an otter. <laughs> like, so I'm kind of like, wondering if we gave Legolas hobbits, would he sink or would he still be able to walk on top? I don't know. Make him carry Boromir because... <laughs> Make him carry Boromir and Aragorn and Gimli because like well, this is just a jerk and needs to be taken down oh. a peg. <laughs> I'm gonna turn Gandalf saying on its head. Elf. <sighs> exactly. the hobbits. Oh. Yes, yes, that scene um, right there. That like I literally had to like close the book and just like like I I did a vlog of my read through that will eventually be posted on my channel and um and I literally had to close my book and just like and just just rant a little bit because I was Why so mad at Legolas. He... I was so mad at Legolas in that scene. <laughs> 
Um, so uh, now we're going to the Mines Moria. Uh -huh. What do you think of that? I love the fact that Mary is the one who gets the riddle mm -hmm. and solves it for Gandalf yeah. instead of Frodo. They gave it to Frodo in the movie for whatever reason, because mm -hmm. Frodo's the main character or something. Mm -hmm. But um, I love the fact that Mary solves it. And yeah. also uh, the Watcher in the Water. Um, yep. That whole aspect is mm -hmm. very freaky. Who was it who was throwing rocks in the water? Was it Boromir? I don't know. It might have been Boromir. Because at this point, Sam and Aragorn are saying goodbye to Bill, releasing him and sending him out. And uh, some it's someone is throwing rocks in the water and is told to stop throwing rocks. Mm-hmm. Let's see. And then they all get chased inside the mine. Let's see, this is it happening. Yeah, it was Boromir. Boromir throwing rocks? Yeah. They switched it up in the movie to Mary and Pippin, which makes sense because mm -hmm. Mary and yeah. Pippin are total Cause... instigators in the mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're the yeah, troublemakers. But yeah, I think yeah. it was Boromir, yeah. But it it was Boromir, Boromir. in the book, mm -hmm. I thought so, yeah. And mm -hmm. so they get chased inside Moria and like this is where Pippin's throwing rocks down the well instead yeah. of pushing a skeleton in. And, like, it's not even for two days later that that even becomes an issue. Yeah. But, like, it's yeah. so interesting because they spend, what is it, five or six days going through Moria? Yeah, yeah. We get to, ex I want to experience Moria filled with dwarves. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I would love to see that. I hope, mm -hmm. I hope when they go and do the TV show that they give us Oh, that would Moria be amazing. with dwarves. Yes, in yeah. its glory. That would, that would be, be so fantastic. Amazing. Absolutely. Um, I love the fact that they're um, that they're going through the mines. Mm -hmm. They're you know we get to see Balin and the tomb where Ori and Nori are, mm -hmm. the three of them where they're at, and we get to hear about their exploits and the things they've done. Mm -hmm. Can we pause? Yeah. Um. Let me see. Pausing What's recording. <laughs> All right. Recording so, engineering. Where were we? Oh, uh, yeah. we were talking about uh, Balin and and Ori and Nori mm -hmm. in the mines of Moria. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found that to be so sad, especially after yes. reading The Hobbit. That yes. like three of our dwarves have kind of gone down. Oh yeah, they went he did, down and in he the most did that on purpose. Ways. He did yeah. that on purpose. He was like. Which which one will the people have cared about the most? And he was like, okay, well, Balin was the one who... Balin's the only who, one that's been developed in the book. Exactly, who <laughs> actually cared about Bilbo. So we'll make, we'll make Balin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and they, they did a phenomenal job on that. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was actually in love with Moria when I saw it on film for the first time. Mm -hmm. Just the halls. And I was like, oh, man, could you imagine this place just being like... Oh, yeah in with dwarves it would mm -hmm. be so cool um and then of course we go through moria and we get to one of my favorite things is the balrog absolutely I oh my love goodness balrog. Yes. and peter jackson like made the balrog terrifying mm -hmm. compared to the way it's described in the books because the yeah. balrog is only like 10 feet tall in the book okay yeah and honestly, I don't even remember the description in the book because I was just thinking about Peter it's, Jackson's version. It's, <laughs> it's more like a 10 foot tall person with horns. Oh, but, okay. But Peter Jackson's version was like a 20 foot tall freaking yep, same, fire with demon, like the big, right? Yeah, a fire and demon with the, yeah. It was terrifying. It was fantastic. Yeah. I yeah. loved it. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, let me see here if... Um, Alan Lee did some art for the Belrog in here. Mm -hmm. um, if you want, you just discuss about uh, Moria <laughs> for a second. While um, I take a look. Let's see. I'm going to see if I have any tabs around Moria. Uh, one right thing that I did floor. find really interesting was that uh, how, how moody... Boromir and Legolas both were about going into Moria. Like th those two were the ones who um, 
who were specifically against it. And, yeah. and, uh, and it was really funny because it was a whole situation where they're like, well, unless everyone agrees, we won't go in. And those two disagreed and they kind of just ended no, up having to go No, you didn't do in. any pictures for the Bridge of Casa Doom. Ah. Uh, Fortunately. Oh, well. That's but I mean, like, the Balrogs of Morgoth. Mm -hmm. Like, you read the Cimmerillion recently, mm -hmm. so you can definitely um, attest to this. The War of Wrath. Mm -hmm. Like, just the whole aspect of um, having an army of Balrogs. Oh, terrifying. my gosh. Yes. Like, oh, my goodness. Those were Morgoth's, like, generals for mm -hmm. his army. Like, here, we're just going to lead, like, hundreds of thousands or millions of orcs into battle. Yep. But we're yep. going to make sure a Belrog is leading the way. And it's yep. just like, oh, man, how are you even going to deal with that, right? Yep. And so uh, the Belrogs are something that I find to be so interesting, and I want mm -hmm. more information on them. Well, uh, aren't they about, like, aren't they the same, essentially, like, they're the same as Gandalf and yeah, Saruman. Corrupted, they're demigods. Yeah, corrupted yeah. Astari kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, they're demigods that mm -hmm. were m m corrupted by Ma mm -hmm. m Melkor. Yeah. Melgoth. Same guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then, of course, we do the flight at the Ford where uh, they mm -hmm. come out of the mountain and end up having to run to Lothlorien because mm -hmm. they are soon going to be chased down by orcs mm -hmm. and definitely being followed by Gollum at this point in time. Yes, yes. Now, this is where we first get Gollum back in the story is through the Mines of Moria. Just mm -hmm. kind of mentioned briefly, I think, in the hinted Mines of Moria. At. Not even, and, Not even mentioned, just hinted at. But he's um, mentioned in Lothlorien, right? Um, I mentioned in him, I think, but they don't say it's him. Yeah, they don't say it's him. Like, yeah, in Moria, they, uh, I think it's Frodo just keeps hearing footsteps after they yeah. like stop. Like he just keeps thinking that he hears echoes of footsteps, and he doesn't under like he's not sure. And that Can sort I just of thing. say that I think J.R. Tolkien is an excellent horror author. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and I think he's that, phenomenal. Yeah, like you, you want to put. Lord of the Rings under fantasy, sure, but look at all the things he has created. Mm -hmm. Giant spiders, uh, Balrog. Golem. <laughs> Golem. Uh, orcs, A ring that the... literally corrupts your mind. <laughs> yeah, the magic in it is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. The imagery that they have is amazing, mm -hmm. and it's so dark, and it's so well done, and the ring wraiths yeah. are terrifying. Like, Tolkien... Mm -hmm is not just a fantasy author he is a horror author and yeah. i i attest him I, I i say he's one of my favorites for fantasy for sure um and i feel like he's an excellent horror author and definitely oh, yeah. has influenced my love for reading horror because mm -hmm. he inspires that sort of panic when you read his story mm -hmm. of what's going on so yeah he can definitely build up so suspense well as well yeah yeah. And I think he did that very well with Golem, uh, no, following certainly. them in this situation. Now, we finally get to the nice elves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the elves from Lost The Florian. elves that were, yes. yes. Uh, I wouldn't even me... consider them nice elves yet, because when we first enter, they're pretty rude mm -hmm. to Gimli, because they're just, you know, elves yeah. and dwarves. They don't get along. Um, but uh, they, they treat it the entire fellowship mm -hmm. with hospitality. They gave mm -hmm. them a place to rest, food to eat. Mm -hmm. They, uh, I think they even housed them for a couple of days so mm -hmm. they could relax and not have to worry yeah. about anything, which was a huge thing that they needed, especially after losing Gandalf yes. to the Balrog because yeah, I think Gandalf was the leader of the mm -hmm. fellowship at that point in time. And now he is no longer the leader. Aragorn has to take over mm -hmm. and sort of uh, lead them. And this is kind of Aragorn's first step into leadership before he becomes mm -hmm. the king of men. Because yeah. he's leading all these free people trying to mm -hmm. destroy the ring to save the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
we see his interaction a little bit with uh, Gladio and Calibrimbor. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, it's not Calibrimbor, is it? Celeb- Caliborn? No, Caliborn. it's... Caliborn? Maybe something. I don't know. I, I kind of um, skim over names sometimes. I do that too a lot, and sometimes they stick and sometimes they don't. Mm-hmm. Usually, I see it over and over again. Mm-hmm. I think Calibrimbor is a different elf. I think so. This is two towers. So I think it might be Calibor or something like that. Celebor. Something yeah, like. I think that anyway. sounds right. Yeah. I anyway, um, they kind of have a nice conversation with Aragorn there about trying to, uh, what they're planning to do next. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, the, they've also heard tell of uh, orcs coming out of um, Isengard at this point as well. Mm-hmm. So we're starting to hear about the treachery of Isengard at this mm-hmm. point in time. Yeah. Um, now, the gifts. The gift-giving part is always one of my favorite parts of the book. Mm-hmm. Also, something I love that they put in the movie. I was sad, though, they didn't give Boromir his belt of golden leaves yes. in the movie. Because I was like, Boromir is the one who is mm-hmm. like, oh, no, she's a witch. She's, like, evil. She's yeah. been in my head, you know. And then, and oh no, they kind didn't of against her going to, either, right? yeah, he was kind of against right. going into Lothlorien, anyways. Yeah, because he's like, why do you trust the elves over mm-hmm. your own people, essentially, to Aragorn? Yeah. It's like, well, you know, he Aragorn knows the elves a lot better than his own people. Mm-hmm. Or, yep. which, or which he knows is, his people is, a lot better than the elves and knows that men are corrupt as could be. What does it do? I mean, yeah, but also at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Boromir was like, hey, I was against going into Moria and look what happened. Can, can yeah. you not listen to me here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need to go here. And they get in there, and one of my favorite things in Lothlorien is actually Frodo and Sam going to the mirror and looking mm-hmm. into it and seeing mm-hmm. everything. Uh, this is where Sam actually gets to see the scouring of the Shire mm-hmm. happening. And this is also where Gladriel decides to give Sam the special dirt yes. and the, and the um, seed for a new party tree. Mm-hmm. And of course, the seed is of the trees of Lothlorien. Yes. So it's it'll be the only tree like that outside of Lothlorien. And I mm-hmm. believe after the elves leave, Lothlorien dies, doesn't it? I okay. think so. Oh, yeah. no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Arwen goes there after Aragorn dies and oh, dies okay. in the woods there walking amongst Lothlorien where it's starting to diminish because the elves aren't yes. there anymore to hold yes. the power. Because I believe it was uh, Gladriel's ring that was even protecting the whole thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nenya. Yeah, because she business. yeah, because she talks, she <laughs> says that, yeah, she says that whenever yeah. they leave that it'll diminish, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so it's quite interesting to see that, that that's going to diminish, but the tree that Sam has is going to go on forever mm-hmm. in the fire, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so our fellowship leaves. They go down the Anduin River mm-hmm. and pass the Aragonath. And also before they pass the Aragonath, we have them sleeping on a bank somewhere. And I believe this is where uh, Frodo and Aragorn are talking about uh, Gollum. Yes. up the river. And I also like how it's this funny thing because Frodo's like, I think I, I think I saw Gollum, but I didn't want to tell anyone. And Aragorn's yeah, like, Aragorn's yeah, like, I think I did too. And I didn't want to tell anyone. And then Sam's like, yeah, I think I did too. And I didn't want to tell anyone. And like, so everyone's yeah. seen Gollum yeah. and they were just like, oh gosh, I'm not going to tell it's, anyone, but everyone's I've seen, been seen <laughs> things. I don't want, I've been seeing things. I don't want people to think I'm seeing things. Yeah, but it's just and, like, guys, you need better communication skills. <laughs> yeah. And, but I mean, like, they go and we have a, uh, we get them to acknowledge that Gollum is following them. Mm-hmm. And uh, so now it's, you know, they got orcs that, to look out for. Because I think that also when they're going down the river, there's mm-hmm. orcs in the woods that are nearby, aren't there? Like, yeah, yeah, shooting arrows into yeah. the river. Yeah. Yeah. 
and so because they have them coming from Moria's side and they mm -hmm. have them coming from the other side too mm -hmm. uh, and that's why they ultimately bank up ahead on the side that's not Moria because mm -hmm. they've been attacked by the orcs from Moria the mm -hmm. entire boat ride down yeah um, now this is the part where Frodo goes off of Boromir and they do mm -hmm. their little thingamajig where we lose where Boromir yeah. has his moment of doubt yeah and uh Frodo decides to kind of just disappear like in the movie we get Frodo and Aragorn having a conversation with each other but that never even happens in the book no Frodo's yeah. just like I'm going up the hill then yeah, he decides he to go down the hill yeah. and hops in a boat and just goes and yeah he just makes a decision he's just like this is too much of a risk for everybody around me yeah I gotta and go yeah even Sam when he gets down to the river Frodo's almost across mm -hmm. and Sam like Sam and Aragorn are looking <laughs> for him right I, I, I found it so weird because Aragorn and Sam are like running up this hill mm -hmm. to go and find Frodo and then all of a sudden Sam's like wait Frodo wouldn't be up here mm -hmm. Frodo's somewhere else so he goes back to the boat and Aragorn keeps going Sam and Aragorn don't even communicate well, I, what I figure is that Aragorn's, like, really, well, again, but again, honestly, throughout the book, there are so many times when I'm like, guys, could you just talk to each other, please? And they don't. Um, but yeah. also, in this, in this instance, Aragorn is, like, twice the height of Sam, so he's probably very well he's ahead probably, probably at ahead, that yeah. point. He might not even be able to see Sam. <laughs> That's, fair. That's kind of um, how I visualized it, at least. Like, Aragorn I, was way ahead of Sam in my mind. <laughs> I just felt it was kind of sad because, like, Aragorn didn't get to say bye to them before they left. And, yeah. you know, that was a nice moment in the movie that they did where they mm -hmm. gave Aragorn that opportunity to you yeah. know, show Frodo that I am here to protect you and yeah. you know I support your decision and what you yeah. have to do mm -hmm. and uh but yeah like I guess that's also one of the things about war that Tolkien is trying to show yeah. us is that you get ripped apart and you yeah. don't know what's going on like yeah it, you it don't happens. get those opportunities you have to take there, what you can get when you get it yeah sometimes there isn't closure and that's a part yeah. of real life right yeah. um so that that was something i really thought was fantastic and then of course we're leading up to the end of the fellowship where boromir is protecting the hobbits yes and uh, i do think that in the books it gives a bit of a better redemption most certainly arc. Uh, um uh, like not to I, say sean bean's arc was not redeemed when he saved yeah. mary and pippin there but but i but feel like in, i understood it less as that when i watched it as the movie than i did not in the book. Con it's not conveyed properly in the mm -hmm. movie compared to the book because in the book he most certainly mm -hmm. redeems himself and even you know that that's a story for when we talk about the two towers but yes it, it's uh it's one of those things that i found to be quite amazing when tolkien wrote it that you know we have this character who's been casting doubt the entire mm -hmm. journey and now at this point we see him stand up and do everything he's been supposed to be doing the whole time mm -hmm. so i found that to be quite fantastic and very mm -hmm. interesting and, and Ormir is such that, a great character everything in his defense that he's been trying to be doing he's just been doing it wrong yeah and <laughs> like he's been trying he has he's been doing his best from his perspective he just isn't as he, he's just a guy He's just a yeah. guy that's here and he doesn't he doesn't know. He's just a dude playing a dude playing another dude playing another dude. Yeah. <laughs> you never seen Tropic Thunder, did you? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he, he was uh he, he was doing good. He mm -hmm. I, and like I love where they leave off with the fellowship mm -hmm. in the books compared to the movie. Because at the end of the movie we get Boromir dead and then yes. moving on. Um, but in the fellowship, Boromir's still alive at the end of it. Yeah, yeah. And then we get a proper time to to say goodbye yeah. and stuff mm -hmm. in the two towers, which is where we'll move on to next here in a moment. 
I wanted to touch on something that I didn't speak about when we were in Rivendell. Was okay, yeah. Aragorn gets a sword, yeah. reforged, mm-hmm. and he's carrying Anduin, uh, Flame of the West, the entire way mm-hmm. through uh, the story. So uh, that that's another arc I found to be something I love to death uh, mm-hmm. for the book compared to the movie is his want and ability to take on the crown mm. at, at this point in time. He knows mm-hmm. he's going to go and become king. It's not a question of if yeah. or when. It's a matter of he's going to go through with this quest. He's going to have to become king. And mm-hmm. I believe even Elrond was like, listen, if you want to marry my daughter, you have to become you king. You have to be king, yeah. Yeah, otherwise mm-hmm. you're not going to marry her, essentially. Yeah. Right? And so I think that's another thing that kind of clicks in his head where he's like, okay, Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to go and become king. Yeah. And Um, I think it's a question of different types of humanizing him, so to speak, because I feel like Tolkien humanized him in a way where he kind of was filling in shoes that he knew he needed to fill in. And his, a lot of his humanization came through his relationships with the other people in the fellowship and that sort of thing. Whereas I feel like with Jackson, his interpretation of Aragorn, um, in his doubt and in his questioning of whether he was worthy to be king, that was a bit of how he humanized Aragorn um, yeah. and how There's he made him a really two different character. ways of doing exactly. it, most certainly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, and I think it's fair to like one version or the other more. I think that they're both valid. I think I love them I both. Like them, I like them um, both the same mm-hmm. myself. Yeah. But it's been... It's been almost 20 years, so I don't think that's going to change for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Been ni- it's been 19 years since the movie's mm-hmm. been released. Yes. Which means I have been reading this book series for 20 years. Wow. Yeah. I, I am. I've, 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 I was 14 years old when I started. Mm-hmm. That's crazy to think of that, like this series has stuck with me for so long yeah and that I can still talk about it Mm -hmm. and still be like excited about it and feel all that stuff because it's ultimately what he created was a story that builds nostalgia I mean it's same thing as what JK Rowling created for Harry Mm -hmm. Potter for that generation of people is Mm -hmm. she created something that they could be nostalgic about yeah and it's been almost, it's probably over 20 years for Harry mm-hmm. Potter since it started. And yeah. can you imagine what it's going to look like in 100 years' time? Like, mm-hmm. kids will still be reading it. Yeah, yeah, because the first movie came out in, what, 2001, 2000, 2001, uh, 2002? It was when, um, I know it was when I was in sixth grade because... It came out when Two Towers came out. Maybe. Came out after Fellowship. It That's came out it. after Fellowship. I think it came out the year after Fellowship. Um, yeah, so or or year, maybe. Two towers came out. Okay. It was either the year of Fellowship, but months afterwards, or the year that those yeah. two towers came out. And but um, yeah. It's just so amazing to see the influence that Tolkien has had mm-hmm. on authors over the generations and how. The little bits and pieces that make up his recipe for success mm-hmm. has kind of gone into the whole genre. Oh, and, yeah. And I love that so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we will leave the fellowship conversation right here. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, K Fox here, she has her link up above and down below. So, you guys, please go check out her channel and uh, come back and join us for the two towers. Mm-hmm.